And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Rolling along like two turds in the wind. By which, you can probably guess that tonight we've seen Venom. Yes. And... Oh, I'll be honest, I really wasn't expecting very much from this. And you weren't disappointed? Well, no! I wasn't disappointed, but it really wasn't more, very much more than I expected it to be. It kind of struck me as like the old school superhero films, the ones we were getting in the 90s, kind of pre-Marvel. Ah, pre-X-Men 1. Uh, Well, probably pre-MCU, you know, before, let's say pre-Iron Man. Well, that's sort of the early 2000s pre-Iron Man. I did see a... A report was somewhere online that said that it reminded them of a 2003 kind of movie. Yeah, probably about right. You know, it was when superhero films were like hit and miss. Yeah. And I have to be honest, I think that this one was kind of a miss. Well, I mean, it certainly doesn't rank up there amongst the the greats. It weren't any uh, Avengers, for example. No, it's certainly not the heady heights of Avengers 1, but then the heady heights of Avengers 1 was the first time that you actually saw a real super team in a full-length movie. Yeah. I thought the plot was a little bit confused in some ways. Like, there was this symbiote, and this group of symbiotes that were going to invade the Earth, and then that one who was like openly going to invade the Earth as well kind of just decided... I'm not going to invade the Earth. Eddie Brock has changed my mind. It was not kind of really showing why. He suddenly had this change of heart and how he suddenly wanted to be, um, stay on Earth. And all it said was like, oh yeah, I was kind of a loser on my planet. And you're kind of a loser, so it made me change my mind. It was a bit weak. Yeah. Plus, I, I don't know if I didn't believe it or... It did come out, seemed to come out of nowhere. Well, but, I mean, like, the um, portrayal of the symbiote, you know, he seemed very controlling and demanding, whereas before, I guess I saw it more under the sway of its hosts, maybe. Uh, it sort of released whatever thing, inner desires the host had, free of sort of societal inhibition. Maybe. But, like, I don't know, that one was kind of controlling and demanding and almost like it was possessing someone whereas before it seemed to be more under the host's control I would have thought It didn't control your actions more that it obeyed your commands Yeah But this way they sort of come to a mutual agreement about the best course of action Yeah and I kind of imagined the symbiote as being slightly more animalistic as well kind of driven more on instinct and emotion oh yeah than oh, having more of a, a, a personality like it seemed to there and I think it would have benefited from a stronger villain as well I don't think whatever his name is Drake Carlton Drake well yeah that that was the character wasn't it I can't remember the actor's name Riz Ahmed yeah him apparently yeah I don't think he's that good and, uh, uh, he certainly doesn't have, that like, good. villainous chops. Yeah. Uh, I, he's no uh, commanding presence of yeah, Tom Hiddleston's of the world. No. And um, that one symbiote that just made its way there from Malaysia or whatever, or wherever it was, it crashed. Yeah, it just, just to get to New York or whatever. Oh, no, San, San Francisco, Francisco, that's it. Yeah. That one didn't really come across that much as um, I don't know. It, it just didn't really work as as much as a antagonist. It just turned off near the end and was like, "Yeah, I'm bad, and I'm going back to get my army of bad people." Yeah, how entirely terrible! There wasn't really any development between like why it was an antagonistic relationship between Venom and Riot or anything really. He just kind of said, "Yeah, Riot's the team leader, and he's got some." You've never seen and stuff. Yeah, he's got some stuff we've never seen. And then he was a bit like um, Carnage in some ways, with all the blades and stuff. 
Yeah, though I did notice a moment in uh, one of the earlier scenes where Venom solidified his costume. And I distinctly remember reading the first encounter between Spider-Man and Carnage. And he remarked that Venom could never solidify his costume like that. Yeah. And yet here we are with Venom solidifying his costume to send out spikes and shards. Did you know, it's a minor gripe, but yeah, it's a thing. Maybe. I kind of generally like the special effects for it. It was pretty good. I mean, yeah. I always imagined it a bit more oily. Yeah. Well, this one was Not so more... sticky. Yeah. Sort of like uh, them little balls of glue that you get. Maybe. But it, it got like threads. It was a bit thready. Sticky and thready. Sticky, thready. Sort of like some kind of yeah. glue tacky mop stuff. I mean, I don't know whether he benefited or not from not being tied to Spider-Man, so he didn't have any, like, shooting webs or anything like that. I mean, he chucked tendrils out and things, but no real kind of webbing. <laughs> but I thought, nearer the end, the um, the fight, I think when you have two dark-coloured CGI creatures fighting at night, any kind of film that has that, and it's... Oh, yeah. It doesn't look that great. It don't. It don't. It really don't. My God, we've actually been talking about the film this entire time. Yeah. I don't think you could decide on the tone as well. Like, yeah, I mean, very uneven. Yeah, there was, like, obviously people's heads being bitten off and things like that. And then also, at times, it was trying to be funny. Yeah. So it was like you couldn't decide whether it was scary or funny. Yeah. A sort of a dark Halloween y movie. Yeah. I thought um, Tom Hardy was quite good as Eddie Brock. He didn't play how I kind of imagined Eddie Brock to be as being more of a intimidating. I thought, especially like when he first becomes Venom and he becomes a muscle head and starts working out. Yeah, well, that was in the comics though, wasn't it? Where he became a muscle head and started working out. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's why, like, when Venom first turned up in the comics, he was kind of a big, beasty kind of fella. Big hench. I mean, he was quite beasty in that, when he was Venom, which was quite good. But yeah, I think the other symbiotes, I mean, like, obviously, they mostly died, apart from that Riot one. Yeah, I think the symbiotes would have benefited from being different colours or something. Like, Well, they did mention a blue in the credits. Yeah, but it wasn't very blue, was it? It was dark blue, almost black, rather than black, black. There was a yellow one that I did see. Yeah, that one that went in the rabbit. Yeah, but he went into a rabbit and we didn't see any more of him, so... Yeah, exactly. That's that. Yeah. Now... I mean, the supporting characters were a bit meh as well, weren't they? I mean... Yeah, it was a very weak really. supporting cast. Yeah. I mean... The Doctor who had reservations and tried to help. help out. This one homeless woman who uh, Drake got for the Venom symbiote. Yeah, I guess that was another thing. Like, what was going on with the symbiotes? Like, could they connect with people or not? Because, like, everyone started dying and what was going on there? It's like um, transplants, they explained. It's supposed to be a right match. I have to have the right match with it. Yeah, but then, like, they were saying Eddie's organs were dying off as well, and he was sort of the right match for Venom. <laughs> so, I mean, they didn't really explain. Like, when you say symbiote is in symbiotic relationship, you think, like, it's a creature that actually would bond with something. Never really made it clear whether it, it was a life form that was actually supposed to bond with things or not. Well, who knows? Exactly. Didn't really uh, explain it very well. They did not at that. It's good to see Cletus Cassidy at the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah. And I never really imagined Woody Harrelson being Cletus Cass Cassidy. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. Interesting, interesting casting. Take. Yeah. But he's very old for it now. Yeah, he is a little bit. I always imagined Cletus Cassidy to be fairly young. Younger, wirier. Yeah. And uh, Woody Harrelson these days, very, well, you know, with middle age, middle age spread and all, and yeah. I was going to yeah. say, maybe when they buy it back, 
all the Spider-Man rights, I'll do something about it, but, like... It's Sony, and who knows? Yeah. There and it was co-financed by Tencent, who are a Chinese company. Ah, uh, well, there you go. That would explain all the um, Malaysians in there. Yeah. They look Chinese. Yeah. Get that a lot now in Hollywood, like because they're expanding into the Chinese market. They're like trying to get stuff that appeals to the Chinese audience. Yeah. Oh, for the days of movies made in Britain. Yeah, on London sound stages and that. Well, after the shuttle had crashed, the ambulances did look English, and then like it looked a bit like the English countryside when it crashed. So I did wonder. I don't know for sure, but I never imagined Malaysia or wherever it was looking like that so much. Interesting, though, that uh, it was like the 90s Spider-Man cartoon where the shuttle crashed, being piloted by John Jameson, J. Jonah Jameson's son, mm-hmm. and the symbiote came down to Earth on that, and it kind of mirrored that because the shuttle crashed, and they said, oh, this one astronaut alive, it's Jameson. I just wanted, before we get to the final part, to mention again that the music wasn't so great. Yeah. Except for the final rap by Eminem over the first part of the credits. Yeah. Which is, well, that very much dates it, because they don't do that kind of thing anymore. Yeah, uninspired, really, the soundtrack. That's what I said. Yeah. All right, so let's wrap it up. Final score and ladder, then. Okay. I think probably about his six. I mean, he wasn't terrible. But he certainly, against all the other superhero films that have been out, it's just not quite meeting the level we expect from those sort of films nowadays. Yeah, well, I'm going to be harsh. Uh-huh. I'm going to give it a four. Wow. Okay. Okay, ladder. So, um... Of the ones we've seen and the ones we can remember. Yeah. So, I think I'm probably going to go with The Incredibles 2 at the top, then The Infinity War, then Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then... Did we see Black Panther this year? Yes, we saw Black Panther this yeah, year. Yeah, then the Black, Black Panther, Panther, and then probably Venom at the bottom. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, it's worth a watch, and, um, you know, interesting portrayal, but it was let down by a weak story, and although the special effects were good, so the, the end fight and the baddie not being very good. Yeah, well, there you have it. I'm going to go... Oh, does Deadpool 2 feature on that? Deadpool 2, yeah, that should go after Infinity War. So, I'm going to go, starting at the top, Ant-Man and the Wasp. At the top? Yeah. Okay. Incredibles 2. Uh-huh. Deadpool 2. Uh-huh. Black Panther after that. Uh-huh. Yeah, Infinity War after that. And then, I am, yes, Venom sadly going to put Venom at the bottom. Uh, poor, poor Venom. Poor Venom. Yeah. It's this year's Dawn of Justice. Oh, it's actually, it's better than Dawn of Justice, I think. Mm. It was one of the most disappointing superhero films I'd seen, The Woman of Justice. Uh, hey, well, uh, I have seen the Ultimate Edition, and uh, the first two hours of the Ultimate Edition are pretty good, and the third hours, they're middling. So anyway, yep, this has been Funky Monkey and his name was Producer. And remember, visit all the links. Yep, they'll be in the description, including Mines. My nameless producer will not be joining us for the Bohemian Rhapsody podcast, which is coming this November. But for now, thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.